Going to like monuments and museums and stuff, seeing like all of the history, that was a great experience as well. And yeah, just seeing all of the people. It was crazy to me because I, I mean, my dad like taught me a lot about it, but I didn't really learn that much about it in school. So like a lot of it was kind of new to me because in school we don't learn about these people, these like black leaders and stuff. So it was kind of like, it was interesting. Like I really thought it was good to be able to learn it. The significance of this facility to the history of Ghana is that during our colonial era, the British were using this film to play polo. Visiting the Kwame Nkrumah Museum was phenomenal. That was that within itself for me was life changing. Three different sections. And we have a museum where we will see his pictures and some of his personal items. There's also a mausoleum where his final remains are Kwame Nkrumah was the first president of Ghana and the reason for them being the first country that ever had its independence. I like to say he was the Martin Luther King of Africa, but on steroids. We face neither east nor west. We face forward. Thank you. And at that time, there was somewhere that held the when he made speech. And among the things he said on that day was that the independence of Ghana just from them going to college and writing papers on it, them going to school and writing papers on it, and people saying like, hey, every time I'm hearing about this Operation Genesis, we gotta check this out, something's, something's great is happening. I haven't heard of any organization taking kids yearly, like I said, this is the third year going to Africa. But people had so little, but they acted like they had just the world in their village. Uh, they were just so humble. The chills that went through my body was just unbelievable. I can't even really express it the way I would like to because I'm still feeling it right now. I still feel it like I'm home for real. <laughs> 